So, welcome. Here we have an Arduino Uno connected up to a seven segment display multiple. So there's eight digits here. And when we connect this up, what can we see? Well, there it comes up. Well, sort of three there to begin with, isn't it? Help 1275. What does that mean? How did we manage to make this display that on there? Well, keep tuned and we'll find out. We'll go through the steps. Keep watching. And welcome back. Now, today I thought we'd uh, continue a bit with some of the LED things that I've alluded to, and in fact you might have even seen on a couple of my test videos. Test video 1 and 2 demonstrated the use of this um, LED uh, matrix to show moving letters on it, but because I only had one, um, it wasn't really effective. Now, I've got some others on order, so when they arrive we'll continue with this project. Um, but in the meantime, we'll have a look at this seven-segment display which has got eight uh, characters in it, or eight digits, I suppose you could say. Now, the commonality between this display and the, the 64-segment um, LED matrix is that they're both run by the same chip. Well, they have one each, but, I mean, it's the same MAX7219. Quite a versatile little chip. So we'll put this one to one side and have a look at this one. Now, this... Uh, was sourced from the Far East. We'll have a look where I got it from. It's a long time ago there now when I was still working with pick chips rather than Arduinos. But um, you can see the chip on the bottom there. You can just about make it out. Uh, Maxim Max7219 and it can control 64 individual LED elements, I suppose you'd call them. And because there's eight here and they've all got eight LEDs, that is if you count all the digit segments plus the decimal point, that's 64. Uh, ditto on this matrix display, there's 64. But the way we use the matrix display is, is quite different from the way this one works. So the first thing to do, I think, is plug it into an Arduino and uh, see what we get out of it. So, what I've done at the moment, it's got an Arduino compatible and uh, this LED board, and I've connected up the pins as it um, shows them in here. So you've got positive and ground, and uh, I've stuck to the convention of uh, the red and the black now for these two. And the other three pins, which is data in, um, chip select, and clock, working down from the top. So there are three data pins we have to somehow manage. So on here, on the breadboard itself, you've just got um, a plus five volts and ground. And over here I've arbitrarily chosen three pins, digital pins that is, um, for our other three. So we've got pins 5, 6 and 7 um, for the data in, chip select and clock. So, um, I know this board doesn't have any program on it at all, because if it did, and we plugged in something like this, there could be some serious repercussions, because these pins could be set to something that we didn't want them to be and it could damage the chips. So always make sure that before you plug things in like this you've got either a, a blank board or something with a known simple program like the blink program so it doesn't do any damage. Right, now the question is what does that do when we plug it in? Right, let's have a look. Oh, bit of a flash. And... Is that it? Is that what we're going to... Oh! Well, let me turn the light off. Well, that's um, reasonably pretty, but not exactly very useful. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised, because we have absolutely no idea what we're doing with these uh, three pins here. The uh, chip selects and data in and all the rest of it. So the first thing we need to do now is look at the, the specs of the Max 7219 and just see what it can do for us. So this is the data sheet for the Maxim 7219 LED controller. Um, now there's lots of stuff on here of course that uh, whilst interesting isn't really pertinent to what we're trying to do at the moment. Um, one thing I did notice here though, it, uh, it says display blanked on power up. Well ours wasn't was it? It came up full brightness with all the digits set. So um, that's a bit of an anomaly. Anyway, the bit we do want is to do with registers. So here's the register address map which is sort of techno speak for command values. Now, 
this means that uh, we've got here the hex codes that we're interested in and what they mean. So by using one of these hex codes and sending it down the wire to the uh, unit, we can then give it some commands. So we can, for example, if you send hex, that's 0x, uh, x means any value at all, but we'll always stick by with 0 by convention. So if we send a 1 down the wire, it means we're talking about digit 0, and then we have to give it the value that we want to put on digit 0. And, I mean, that applies to all the 1 digit 0 through to 7. And then we've got decode mode, um, the intensity of the individual LEDs, scan limit, not sure what that is, might have something to do with how many digits are being displayed at any one time. Shutdown, that's on or off, and display test. Now, display test, that probably, now that's interesting because that looks like what we had when we uh, originally turned it on, display test. Anyway, um, now the point that we are interested in is this little bit here. It says, the decode mode register sets BCD code B, more techno speak, 0 to 9 E H L N P and hyphen. Now from our point of view that's very useful because it means if we set the decode mode at each of the LED units it means we can send down a binary coded decimal value um, for that digit. So we can say go and put a 2 on that digit, put a 4 on that one over there without having to specify all the individual little segments that make up that digit. So that could be very useful to us indeed. Um, the shutdown register format, which is um, register C, as you see here, hex, 0x, x meaning don't care, but by convention we put a 0, C, and it's all described up here, look, shutdown, uh, we've only got two values here, shutdown mode, which is 0, in bit 0, and 1 in bit 0, meaning normal operation and all these X's in here mean don't care it means doesn't matter what value you put in there and nothing will happen but by convention once again we tend to put zeros if we specify them indeed at all and the decode mode this is um, the BCD decoding them for each individual digit um, we want code B decode four digits seven to zero that's what we need yeah so we're going to send down FF to say we want the special decoding mechanism for each digit. Thank you very much. Right. I think that's probably all we need at this stage. Oh, what about the intensity? Let's have a look at that one. So here we have the intensity register format. So when we send down the command for the intensity, which is 0x, hex, x don't care, a. So when we send down an a as the, as the address, we can say any one of these values down this right hand column and it will be one thirty second duty cycle right all the way up to 31 30 seconds so very dim to full brightness effectively right now ah the scan limit that's what we looked at uh, very briefly in the main address register table display digit zero only zero oh, so you can only turn on certain digits if that's what you want so only zero 0 and 1, 0, 1 and 2. So if you didn't want the other digits to come on at all, either permanently or just whilst you were displaying a certain number, you can control it by this method. I think for our purposes though, we want them all on. So we'd use um, hexadecimal value 7 to say we want them all on. Right, well I think it's about time we wrote a bit of code and put all this to into a real world practice. So, time to do some coding. Now, I'm going to keep the camera on the module whilst we're doing this. Um, now as you can see, I'm hoping, if my editing skills are up to it, you should see the 7219 doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things, coming on, staying off. That's because we've got absolutely nothing on that Arduino Uno programmed in at the moment. And the 7219 is probably having a hell of a job interpreting what's, what it thinks it can see on the data control lines. So I'm going to start coding over here. Rather than watching me type in painfully, I'll just cut the video at certain points so that it just appears as if by magic. Now the first things we've got to do, we've got to define the pins we're using, which is the um, data in pin that's, that's out from the Arduino but into the Mac 7219, the clock, um, the chip select pin, uh, which tells the 7219 that it's being addressed, and then the clock pin, 
which basically tells the 7219 as you receive a clock pulse many thousands of times a second that's the time you should be looking at the data in and determining what value is on there. So let's get those three values defined up front. So there's the three values we need, um, which if you remember they were on our Arduino board. Uh, I'm just pointing to them now, f five, six and seven. I mean there are arbitrary pins, you could use any digital out pins, not pins um, zero or one, ideally because they're connected to the receive and transmit so just avoid those if you can. First thing we must do is set these pins to output mode because after all we intend to send data out. If we don't do that, um, unpredictable results will happen. Right, so I've defined the three pins that we're using as declared up here. They're all output and I've set the chip select to high. Um, now on this 7219, I think generally when you're writing um, digital data like this, you must set the chip select pin from high to low for every piece of data that you intend setting. Right, so here's the code. Now, to um, output data via digital pin, we use shift out. Um, the first thing we've got to do, though, is set the chip select to low. Remember that I said that to address a chip, it's actually setting it low, not high. Sounds a bit reversed in my view, but there we are. Um, and having sent some data, we then set it back to high so that the chip knows that's the end of that chunk of data, if you like. Now, to send data out, we do the shifting of bytes, uh, bits within a byte. This is shifting data out bit by bit down the digital pin that you've selected. In this case, it's pin 5. So we're saying down pin 5 and using pin 6 as my clock pulsing mechanism to tell the 7219 that data is on the way, we're sending it out in most significant byte first. It's just the way the, the chip expects the data to arrive. And what's the value of test mode? We're saying zero, which means switch off. So that's that chunk of data. The next bit of data we're sending is this one here. And we're saying C, which is um, normal mode or output mode. Let me just get the, um, the sheet up again. So C, it's actually called shut down as I've documented it here, and we're saying, I want to address the shutdown register, and I want to send the value zero, and zero means shutdown mode, i.e. switch all the digits off. So, with these two combinations, I'm expecting that now to go off, so let's have a look. Let's upload that. There it goes, flashy, flashy. And as if by magic, that's great, look, all the digits have gone off. That means the 7219 is communicating with the Arduino, and it understands what it was being told. Excellent. Right, next bit. Let's, let's do some real programming now. Right, the next one is to say, I want to um, address all digits on here. So all digits on this board, I want to be able to send binary coded decimal to. That is a real value. So I can say, put a four on that digit, put a one on that digit, put an H on that digit, rather than trying to address each one of these little tiny LED segments to make up a value. If you wanted to make up your own characters, of course, like a lowercase b, you would have to individually address each one of those little segments and not in BCD mode. So you'd have to say, for this digit, I'm going to do my own thing. I don't need any help. But here, we need all the help we can get. So let's um, paste that bit of code in. So here we are with the next bit of code that says, basically, for all the digits, I want to do my BCD thing. 0, 9 address means um, 0, 09 it's decode mode and decode mode with um, hexadecimal ff means um, all digits 7 through to 0 in fact there's a typo there that's 0x ff that's right right that that wouldn't do anything by itself now let's see if we can actually let's see if we can actually get a digit to go down there shall we um, right to send a value down we need to address the individual digits so the address, for example, for digit zero, zero being this far-sided one on the right-hand side, is hexadecimal zero. And we'll send it down a BCD value after that. Let's do that next. So on this next bit of code, we've said, right, set the chip selector low so it's ready to receive data. We're saying address hexadecimal zero one, which on the register map means digit zero on the right-hand side here. 
and we're saying the value I want you to display is 5. Now 5 being, because we're saying we want this help, this, we want the actual digit number 5 to display in its entirety on that rightmost digit, not some combination of, of segments on this, on this LED. So I'm hoping when we send that down, it should display 5. I'm just thinking for a minute, this shutdown which we put here, which has shut down all the digits, um, it may not work until we say standard standard mode. Let's have a look. Um, register, just reading from things. Yes, I think we're going to have to say the output back on again. So after this, and at the end of all our code here, we don't want to have shutdown. We are going to want to be able to display that. So we're going to say switch the digits back on. So we've switched them off, we've shut everything down, we've marked the digits to say I want them BCD help, um, set the rightmost digit to number 5 and now switch it back on again. Let's see what happens. I mean after all, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Ah. Okay, well the rightmost digit most definitely is a 5. We've got 0 dot, then a dot, then a 0, then a 2. Let me just reset that and see what happens. Ah, no change. Let me unplug and let it uh, kill any memory that was there before. I've got a very strong suspicion of what's happening here. Oh, flashy, flashy. Five. Ah, now that's looking better, isn't it? So we've come quite a way in the last few minutes and getting that first digit displayed on the uh, LED there. Now the second part of this video really does explore how to do the rest and it's uh, a bit more interesting, I think, because we see results much more quickly. So join me there and see you on the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Remember, you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.